over 99.9% .9 of all species that have ever evolved are now extinct again. But as we all know, even the most experienced experts are only human, and humans can be wrong. Many a creature that has been officially declared extinct has subsequently been reintroduced into the living world. What's more, scientists are currently even planning to revive an animal that is actually extinct. But which animals have already been affected by the Lazarus effect? And which creatures could still be with us despite all scientific findings? One of the best known resurrected animals is the Quelacanth. And you have to let that melt in your mouth once again. Before the Comorian Quelacanth was discovered in the Indian Ocean off South Africa in the 1930s, scientists believed that the bony fish had already disappeared from the earthly scene 66 million years ago. Probably the most famous living fossils of all, the fossil record of this group can be traced back no less than 409 million years. While the sea creatures can grow up to 2 meters long and weigh 100 kilograms, they have long been referred to as the ancestors of land vertebrates. According to the latest findings, however, the Kilicanths were wrongly given this title. Genetic comparisons have shown that the lungfish are much more similar to the land vertebrates than the Kilicanths. Incidentally, we have a certain Marjorie Courtenay Latimer to thank for catapulting the fish from prehistoric times back into the modern age. On December 22, 1938, the director of a marine museum spotted a steel blue. 150 meter long creature in a large catch of fish, which subsequently turned out to be a relic of the past that was believed to be dead. However, almost 50 years were to pass before a Kulakanth was observed in its natural habitat. The groundbreaking observation off the Comoros was also able to narrow down the distribution area of the recent representatives, which extends as far as Madagascar. What is this caged creature all about? The internet wouldn't be the internet if it were satisfied with just plain scientific facts and zoological descriptions. Sometimes images haunt the web that tickle our imagination and are accompanied by a central question. What on earth is this? This is also the case with this photo, which shows us a four-legged creature whose cage is being hoisted onto the back of a truck by a crane. The ox-like animal was allegedly photographed by a concerned man who witnessed the creature's transportation. The creature was very frightened. The alleged photographer stated that he had never seen such an animal before in his life. All the more frightening were its eyes, which glowed like two balls of fire in the blackness of the night. But what could this creature be? Is the story really as spectacular as is being reported online? Simply write us your thoughts on this picture in the comments below. Lucky you, or rather, a pig with a navel. While the Chaco peccary is a South American species of the same family of even-toed ungulates, it is also the only species in the genus Catagonus. Researchers first discovered that our planet had seen these bristly contemporaries at least once before in 1930, although the initial description was based solely on bone finds. However, contrary to all gloomy predictions, the specimens that were sighted in Argentina in 1974 proved that the brown-gray mammals were not in fact extinct. While their distribution area extends to Paraguay and Bolivia, the Chaco peccaries live together in groups of four to ten individuals of different sexes and ages. Their diet consists mainly of seeds, roots and cacti, and it is said that they can even survive without drinking. Although the list of their natural enemies only includes the jaguar and the puma, the Chaco peccaries are facing an uncertain future. Their habitat is being increasingly reduced by cattle pastures and soy plantations. We have the Lazarus effect too. Mice are small, damn nimble and easy to overlook, so it's no wonder that the Bavarian short-eared mouse made a run for it after its discovery in 1962. While 23 animals were captured near garmisch partenkirchen at the time and classified as a new species, it was considered lost for decades a little later. It took until the year 2000 for scientists to track down a new population in neighboring Tyrol. The fact that the small rodents managed to escape the prying eyes of the experts is due to their way of life. The animals live in underground tunnels. As a rule, only the small piles of earth formed during digging give any indication of their presence. Will the mammoths come back? What at first sounds like a spin-off from Jurassic Park is actually a real goal of US researchers. 
They want to revive the mammoth, and not at all to raise hell on a tropical island, but to combat climate change. The activity of the mammoth should slow down the thawing of the permafrost and thus also prevent the release of the greenhouse gases stored in it, or so the idea goes. But where is the mosquito encased in amber that brings this idea to reality? Well, in this case, the insect is slightly larger and goes by the name of the Asian elephant. This is because the DNA of the modern trunked mammoth actually matches the genetic material of the woolly mammoth by 99.6%. To bridge the remaining 0.4%, the scientists want to use a new genetic technology to implant certain mammoth genes into the DNA of Asian elephants. While 0.4% may not sound like a lot at first, the practical implementation involves changing millions of positions in the gene, and, at best, without causing any damage. So it remains to be seen if and when the Ice Age giants will return to the present. Is this mystical monster a survivor of the Ice Age? These are stories that make our hair stand on end. Stories that tell of a monstrous creature that roams the rainforest at night and preys on humans. Researchers David Oren and Ilton Da Silva believe that what goes by the name of Mapinguari in Cario Indian folklore is a survivor of the last ice age. In detail, we could be looking at a giant sloth in the flesh. Officially, the era of the up to six meter tall and four ton Colossi ended 10,000 years ago. Unofficially, they are alive and well and living somewhere in the Brazilian rainforest. But what are the pillars on which the bridge between fictional monster and real living creature is built? Well, in this regard, Oren and De Silva refer to the fossilized footprints of giant sloths, which coincide with the tracks attributed to Mapinguari. Furthermore, the researchers also heard strange cries at night during their jungle expeditions which the Cario also described as the sounds of the monster. The tribe members also stated that they had already come face to face with the beast, although its robust body easily withstood the bullets fired. According to the experts, some giant sloths actually had something like natural chain mail. Pebble-sized pieces of bone were embedded in the skin of these animals, which were so close together that they would have stopped a bullet. However, although several research expeditions are currently planned, the return of the giant sloth is still in the stars. A 6.5 million square kilometer search area has to be scoured, only 40% of which has been explored. This animal could soon become extinct, again. In 1985, another entry was added to the animal lexicon. However, the article on the Lagomera giant lizard was accompanied by a small but significant addition, already extinct. The surprise was all the greater, when Spanish biologists soon discovered six living specimens on the eponymous Canary Island of La Gomera. While the giant part of the name is due to the body length of up to 49 centimeters, the reptiles live exclusively on the western walls of the Riscos de la América cliff. Unfortunately, this is also home to one of the most endangered lizard species in the Canary Islands. For once, however, it is not humans who are responsible this time, but stray cats. In addition, there are repeated rock slides in the extremely small distribution area. The species decline is now to be combated by catching domestic cats and breeding them in sanctuaries. Probably the loneliest frog in the world, the Sehuenca's water frog Romeo had a difficult fate because despite his name, he was missing the croaking Juliet. While Romeo eked out a lonely aquarium existence in a natural history museum in Bolivia, he was long considered one of the last representatives of his species. But then the scientists arranged an unexpected date for the slippery bachelor. They came across a young female in the South American cloud forests, which they, who would have thought, christened Julia. True to the motto, opposites attract, the experts now hope to have found the perfect frog match. Because while Juliet is very lively and dynamic, Romeo has a rather shy nature. When the protective measures work. You think your Uncle Ralph is the world's biggest bully? Well, then you're wrong. That title goes to the New Zealand Takahe, although rail in this case doesn't mean a nickname, but a family of mostly flightless crane birds. After the arrival of humans, the goose-sized birds had to contend with unrestrained hunting and introduced predators. After the population continued to decline as a result, the Takahe were even considered extinct in the late 19th century. 
but when a certain Jeffrey Orbell went to a remote high valley in 1948, he was surprised to see around 400 Takahe there. However, their situation was anything but relaxed. Other animals were competing for their food, causing their numbers to drop to a new low of 118 at the beginning of the 1980s. But then came the hour of the large-scale rescue plan. The invasive food competitors were hunted down, predators were combated, and new Takahe were bred at the zoo. Looking back, the measures were a complete success. Today, over 300 birds live in the mountains of New Zealand again. Press subscribe now. The next highlight video will follow tomorrow.